been thinking about making a rocket mass heater, which is an efficient form of heating with wood. For years, we've been thinking about doing this. It's a challenge even for Nick because it's some materials he's not used to working with. Um, and it's taken us a while to get around to doing it. Well, as soon as we got started, we kind of fell in love with the whole idea and the process and realizing that some parts of it are really quite easy. Um, so we're already planning to put one eventually into the yurt as well. However, it's also not happening lickety split. It's a big job. We still have some work to do to finesse our, our exterior cob, the stuff that is gonna be structural and is gonna actually look nice on the outside of our bench. We've got some work to do to figure that out, so that'll be in a future video. And we're also going to do a second video with some more detail about what you're seeing today. So today we'll get you through the, the gist of it, and next week we'll continue with more about the cob. <laughs> So this is our friend Thomas. He's worked with Cobb uh, a lot more than any of us. We've gone to some workshops and One. stuff. There you go. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Cobb is traditionally built on top of a dry stack foundation of some kind. We did a dry stack of rock, um, just a layer of rock, so there's a little airflow underneath. And yeah. so that the cob is separated from the concrete. I couldn't work on the spiral staircase because another huge project. The drill thing. Because Dad was mostly welding, and but now I can work help all I want. You can't weld together cob. We came up with some quickie form work, uh, just boxes of sand that uh, would hold back. Um, the layer of rock that goes down. Sadie, is that a sandbox? No. <laughs> what is it? A box of sand. <laughs> There's a layer of perlite and clay slip that goes underneath the combustion unit. So In, that's to insulate it so that um, you don't lose heat from your combustion unit into your floor that heat is able to travel on and and drive the drive the rocket. Um, perlite is a is a mineral. It's real light and airy. It looks uh, and feels kind of like styrofoam beads. Um, and it packs tight. Okay. But then it'll still pop apart when you when you pinch it. But it's really not good to breathe. So you want to think all of it at least a dust mask when you're handling perlite. Um, and with the perlite sort of screeded level, not pressed down, but uh, at least scraped reasonably level, we're able to start our first course of fire brick for the combustion unit. After that's all tapped and leveled out, then you, you brush sand into the cracks like you were laying a patio and what that does is it just takes up all that little air space in between the bricks so that they can't move or wiggle. This rocket is bigger than I expected. It's pretty big, isn't it? It's going to be a mass Yeah, It's going to be mass. How much do you think it's going to weigh? A lot. I've heard about 4,000 pounds. Yes. What do you think of that? Yes. That's 2,700 pounds of rock. At least right there that we well that we picked up when yeah. it was gotcha and then four thousand pounds Probably four thousand pounds of heat. I don't know. But the cool thing is you can you can figure out when four thousand pounds of mass is heated up to seventy five degrees. I mean, you know, how long is it going to stay that way? A long time. <laughs> so after this, we're bonding bricks, um, brick to brick with a uh, clay slip that's made from fire clay. You, uh, you dip the brick in water, then you, you, so that it'll suck up the clay a little better, and then you dip just the ends that you're bonding into the clay slip. And then it 
it's not quite like regular mortar, um, but you do have a little yeah. squish in there. The clay slip takes up a little bit of space to right. be able to play with it and tap each course level. You want gravity to be the bonding agent more than the clay slip. So that means go level and true. Our first tubing runs are five inches off of the floor. So we wanted to build up to close to that with Cobb um, before we had tubes in there or did the manifold. So right, you know, we mixed up two long batches long. of Cobb yeah. and put it right on top of our rock foundation. So it is a little different material than I am used to. Uh, I've done a little bit of duct work just here and there. Um, so I, I kind of have a method for putting that stuff together. But brickwork, I've never done brickwork or masonry before. Um, and uh, working with cob and the perlite and clay in general, it's all kind of new to me. So, um, but it's good. I like getting into new stuff and um, they're the right materials for the job. So I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. So we're just working with thermal cob so far. And we know it's sandy enough that we can hear it. Um, so we put that layer down and then it was time to uh, work up to getting the eight inch ducting in there, which means I had to go back and insulate the heat riser. We used what's called Dura Blanket. So you cover the um, Dura Blanket with quarter inch hardware cloth. And that's just because it's sort of a fragile material. Um, and if you take the barrel off to uh, to clean in there, you stick a vacuum tube in there, you just don't want to tear it apart. So you cover it up to protect it. Then it's time to fit the lower barrel, uh, also called the manifold. This is the bottom barrel piece, and it'll actually get cut a little shorter than this. And the locking band connects the two. It'll have a gasket in there. So what I just did is I created a little flange that helps get the, the barrels, the top barrel, in the right place relative to this. For your ducting, you want um, you want just a slight rise, starting at the manifold, going all through your bench. You want just a little bit of a rise. Um, you don't ever want to go back down because the heat will collect in those high spots. So I set up my laser level and made myself a measuring stick. It's kind of weird to think about because our stick is laid out in reverse. That's where we start. And okay. then we're gonna wanna, anywhere as we go along it, it'll just wanna climb from there. That's where we're at in the process. We have a lot more cob to do, but um, so far, so good. So how are you feeling about the choice to make a rocket mass heater? Uh, I'm feeling good about it. I know that there's a lot more hours left in it, but I think um, we will be happy that we did, um, you know, later on. I think the wood saving is going to be um, uh, pretty great, that, you know, that we don't have to chop quite as much wood, that we don't have to burn a, you know, have a fire going all the time. That's going to be good. And I think it's just a, a cozy choice, too. I like the the idea of heating the people and, and not, you know, rather than just heating the air. Some of you have been asking about our other heating system because, of course, you watched us do the labor of putting uh, PEX tubing into our concrete slab floor. 
that's uh, designed to allow hot water to travel through that PEX tubing and heat that slab in order to heat our home from the floor. Are these two systems going to be connected? Nope, we are not connecting our radiant floor heating with our rocket mass heater. They're two separate systems and the intention there is uh, duplication in order to have maximum security, if you will. We really are into using different methods, trying to have backup systems. We had not made a rocket mass heater before. We weren't completely sure that it was gonna work. And also, as you know, we tend to build in systems for our future. So sometimes we completely act like teenagers and then sometimes we act like we're just about to retire. I guess that's what it is to be in your 30s, right? 30s or the new 20s, something like that. We do not have any electricity up here at the moment. Um, we, and we're not gonna be able to install solar panels before this winter. Um, although that is in the future, that's an expense. And so it's something that we're um, scheduling out as we have the resources to do these projects. We need something right now that does not require a water pump to work, that does not require electricity to work. So we really are balancing the possibility that the radiant floor heating is gonna be a better choice later on with the fact that the rocket mass heater is gonna be a great choice right now. I didn't find it, they found it. Did they give it to you? Yeah. Are you gonna put it in the dirt? Of course it is not a secret couch. No, it's, it's not very a secret. Special couch. It's a little hideout. Oh, okay. And this is, and these are the guest chairs. Oh sorry, I sat on one of them. It's okay. You guys like to play up here? Mm -hmm.